Welcome, everyone. It's the 25th of August. This is Documentation Office Hours Asia. Topics on my list, Google Summer of Code, choosing a plugin bill of materials version, add the existing requirements and support policy to a new chapter. I can show you a prototype of that. And then veil.sh, a command line for um, making suggestions on text and DevOps World Tour. Any other topics you'd like to be sure we discuss today? Mm, interesting stuff, go for it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so Chris, Google Summer of Code, which which of the topics are most of interest to you or which ones sh should we let ride for this session? So we've certainly got tutorial improvements mm. from- Okay, Ashutosh, from, right? Uh, Ashutosh, right? And the project is the uh, Docker Compose project. Yeah. We've got the new site layout demonstration recorded in today's in UX SIG mm -hmm. and in today's Docs Office Hours Europe. Yeah. Great. Okay. And then. Uh, the others, GitLab plugin modernization that is not as directly of, directly related to documentation. And the fourth was, oh, or is, why is it not registering for me? Um, yeah, me too. It's like for some reason, plugin health probe. Oh, plugin health score. That's right. And that one. So that one has been extended by about three weeks, right? Yep. So is I'm in this project. And site layout has been extended about three weeks. Four weeks, I think. Oh, it's four weeks. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Now GitLab plugin modernization. Harsh has is deep in back in school, so we definitely don't want to extend that one. And Ashutosh, I think the decision was not to extend either. Yeah. Good. All right. Anything that you want to share or any highlights from, from any of those? Um, I think it's like uh, we are work, still working out the details for the Gatsby blog for the new layout or alternative building tool project. So that, that one's like, um, just like my idea is to have like um, the process automated instead of like having to use them. Um, the strappy because they were going to use like on on Gavin's recommendation of Gatsby .js mm -hmm. and also strappy as the backend for storing the data, but normally it's like they they have this um platform or portal for strappy you have to use it's called it's kind of like an admin dashboard. Um, but the thing is that I want to retain the current flow of like um processing blog posts, but I'm not sure if that's sustainable. So that's the consideration I'm having. Okay, so so it, is it that Strapi doesn't provide a way to do reviews or what's the... It does, but it's like it wouldn't be going through like um, the current, like it, it would be very different from the way we're doing it now. Uh, and only okay. like some people can do it, like not everyone can do it. Okay, so it's it's not publicly visible. We can make it publicly visible, but it takes some work. Oh, okay. So, and, and also, like, um, so maybe for example, we can make everyone a reader. So that that might work. But then, like, not everyone can review it. Then maybe that's the issue. So re review comments are not allowed by readers. They need to be a reviewer. There's a different concept of reader and reviewer. Um, and also it's like, it has to be done via the portal. So it's like, or dashboard. So it's, like it's kind of hard, harder to have that way, that way. But we can, we can make it work somehow to, to have the existing process preserved. Mm -hmm. That would take some work to integrate like the whole setup with GitHub. Okay, so they've got they've got a front or uh, they've got some form of front end integrated to their back end that is yeah. not a GitHub pull request. Yep. 
Ah, okay. All right. Interesting. Okay. But the, 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 is that also for all non versioned documentation? No, or ju that, just that's for blog posts. Just for uh, blog posts. Uh, ju okay. Just for blog posts. Yep. Uh, non version documentation uses Gatsby directly and GitHub like pull some, requests, or how does some, it work? Uh, yeah, some, some of them is like, uh, in I think some of them it's in in Tor, some of them in Gatsby, but oh, uh, okay. they should be they they should there wouldn't be a, a part of the blog. So it's like I think hopefully we can set up so um. So only the blog needs to be really that way, but maybe the like anything done with Gatsby too. So I'm not sure. We need to figure out. Okay, version documentation uses Antora and GitHub pull requests. Yep. Okay. And some non versions documentation too. Yeah, right. Okay, good. So, so it's if we set it this way, it would be Antora for, for GitHub pull requests for all version documentation. Yep. And some non version documentation. Yep, that's correct. Okay, interesting. All right. Anything else you want to share there? Mm, also, like um, there's still a lot of work to to transition to the new workflow and new tooling, but um, we have to figure out the logistics to of doing so while we're just still here. Right, it's possible, but we have to push a bit. Well, and we knew that there was a risk as we started this project that the new site layout was enormous right so that's that's not yeah. a shock the fact that we've got great demos and great concepts is already a a, a victory i think so yeah okay. i think i did a quick job oh yeah no question in my mind the just watching the layouts that he's been able to generate yes very it looks good. very nice very pleasing Good. And now versions still managed as in as separate branches, uh, or how are how are the versions managed in his current prototype? I think it's if it's separate branches for now. Good. All right. Great. Yep. Anything else on the site layout? Mm, nope. Okay, so I, I guess I can give you some status of what I know about the, uh, the Docker Compose project. Okay. The uh, it needs it needs one or more new Docker new Docker repositories and Docker containers in those repositories and the infra team can't take on can't do those docker repositories currently they just they're they've got too many urgent things that have got to happen instead so we could do we could create a prototype that uses ashutosh's or bruno's uh, personal repository, personal containers for now, okay. uh, not publish to the Jenkins site. We just we should not publish something to the Jenkins site that depends on a private repository. That's that's a mis or a personal repository. That's a mistake. Yeah. But it's it it would give us a chance to test drive the workflow, test drive updating for new versions, etc. Yeah. Good. Okay. 
Okay. Any qu any questions on the Docker Compose project? Nope. Okay, and on plugin health score, unrelated to documentation, likewise for GitLab plugin modernization. I got a question about GitLab plugin modernization, though. So okay, it's kind go of ahead. More like a, um, I've been meaning to ask you, like, how do you think about like at like inviting um Hodge maybe uh, to be a co maintainer? Oh, uh, that would be great. Is do you think Harsh is interested in being a co co maintainer? I did ask him, but uh, I I I I would invite him if it's okay with you. But he, he yes. I don't expect him to do much work while he's studying. Maybe wow. maybe he can add like add more effort later on once he's start, like more, have more time, or when, once his education is over. That that sounds good to me. If if I would love to have Harsh harsh remain somehow connected to the jenkins project but i i agree with you that education is his first priority it's most important that he finish that university education successfully but i fully support it if he'd like to continue to be involved yeah so let me ask him i'll ask him later and then we'll Great. Get yeah okay anything else on gitlab plugin modernization nope Okay, so then I've got a question for you and for Meg. Let's look at, I want to describe an issue and let's talk about how we would how we would address it. Okay, so here's the issue. So this is from um, Kay Leonard. Uh, first name I think is, yes, Kyle, from Kyle Leonard. So Kyle is a plugin maintainer. So that's the persona we're dealing with. Kyle likes to use the Jenkins plugin bill of materials. And the plugin bill of materials is a great choice because it allows you to avoid declaring explicitly which versions of plugins are in your dependency list. Instead, you just declare, I depend on this plugin and you rely on the plugin bill of materials, this thing, to provide the version number. So Chris, I know you already know this. This is mostly for Meg's benefit. Okay. All right. So so the appreciate it. This is the the thing that they insert this little block of text into their plugin palm file. But Kyle correctly asked, what's the value that I put here? The ellipsis there tells us, ah, it's not a known thing. Kyle said, well, which one is it? And why would I choose that one? And so here's here's the it's okay. What version? And should I just go here and select the latest without caring about what version of Jenkins I put here? Because this number 2.387.x is derived from a Jenkins LTS baseline. Right, so it, it can be either 2.361 or 2.387 or 2.332 or 2.401 or 2.415, and and which version you choose there, does that somehow have a relationship to this version number? And the answer is yes, it does. Okay, so any questions on the setup to the to the problem statement? Nope. Okay, so now let's talk about about the 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 situation. So each each artifact ID, this bomb dash Jenkins version number, has a corresponding set of one or more releases of the of the build materials that are associated with it. But, Eventually, we stop updating older versions and only update the newer versions. And you can see that here. 346, the, the newest version is 1763. That's when we stopped updating 346. For 361, the newest version is 2102. That's when we stopped updating that one. 375, the newest version is 2198, dot whatever. Now, 387 and 401, the newest version, this is actually no longer the newest version because this one is still being updated. And the newest version number is 
a larger number than that. Okay, questions so far? No. Um, yep, I do have a question. So at the time of the like of like this information is fetched. So uh, that is the latest version, right? That was the latest version. When when I wrote this comment two weeks ago, yes. at that moment in time, this was the latest version. Okay. Now, however, if I instead look at the latest version, let's go look at it just to, to show proof that in fact the the newest version is 2357 not 2312 so there have been 45 changes since the point when i took this i answered this question 2 weeks ago so this number just keeps increasing on lines of the bill of materials that are actively being updated okay Okay, no questions so far? No. All right, so then, now, <laughs> okay, now, this is where it it's a challenge, right? Because we've got some lines where we can give the answer with confidence, it will never change, right? This line, if you, if you chose 346, that's the correct version. No need to update it. No need to revise it in any way. If you choose 361, this is the correct version. It will never change because we've stopped updating that version. This one, it changes at least once a week because we release a new version of the Bill of Materials pretty much once a week. So my thought was, okay, we could, and this was what I had put in the we could put into the documentation of this repository into its readme. Here it talks about usage, right? We could extend this thing by saying, giving examples for each of those versions. 387, here's a specific example. 361, here's another specific example, 346. And notice that I named these because they have certain significance, right? Mm -hmm. This one is static. And it's the first Jenkins that requires Java 11. This one's static because it's the last to support Java 8. Okay, so, so those three I could imagine. But we've got two more now. We've got 2.401 and 2.414. Yeah. And those are all actually tracked in a page that describes this process. Where is our, our page that describes the process? Let me show you that page. So it's called choosing a Jenkins version to build against. And here, this is where Jesse Glick and Daniel Beck and others have helped us formulate guidelines to choose what should be your Jenkins baseline. And when you choose your Jenkins baseline, that's the same version you should choose for the bill of materials. So, and this page, thankfully, is automatically maintained. Notice that it says here, 2.387.3 and 2.401.3 are good core dependencies. Or you might consider 4.14.1. Okay. Now, those things two weeks ago said 2.401.3. And this one would have been 387.3. And this one would have been 375.4. So it's smart enough to be updated automatically. Now, how do we do the descriptions and where? All right, so my thought was the easy one is put them in the readme, in this files readme and put specific examples with the option to write some update CLI code to automatically insert the version number here shortly after a release. And then it would truly be 
as a plugin developer, I just copy and paste this section and paste it into my code. No need to teach people anything. Just say, copy this. Mm, we need to maintain it from time to time. Yeah, it would. Yeah. So because of yeah. because of the magic of update CLI, there's a there's an action that gets assigned here, just like we've got uh, update mm -hmm. CLI that's running already here. We could extend that definition and have it update submit pull requests to update the README. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. And for me, that's a that's a an attractive option. I suspect the coding to do that may be more complicated unless we do something like split split it out to a separate file where okay there's a file for three for the last last java 8 version there's another file and each of them is a different readme at the top level here because there would be a readme yeah whatever okay. that way then update cli only sees one version tag and only has to process one version tag that I need to talk to Bruno about. He knows update CLI better, much better than I do. Okay. So the version line is supposed to be a range of versions or just a single version? Single version. Okay. And real word, I mean, what's surprising me is that there's nothing here about which bomb my current plugin has been tested against. And And that's a good point, but that's actually right up here. So you choose, you select the plugins LTS baseline. And and that now this should probably be a this link. This tells me choose the number I like. It doesn't right. say choose your plugins LTS baseline should be a version that you have tested against and it's passed or something like that. Well, and, and or that's why pedantic. No, no, that you're not being pedantic at all, but that is much more verbiage than needs to, than the, the expressing the concept you're trying to express needs to happen in this page. Okay. Because this page describes the many different alternatives that might cause you to choose one Jenkins version or another ah. as your minimum baseline. So, so this thing is giving you the what I call the engineering compromises between should I choose a newer version? Should I choo choose an older version? What's the impact if I choose a newer version? What's the impact if I choose an older? Should I choose a weekly? Should I choose an LTS? And why might I do that? And each of those is described here okay. in this whole, oh, whole okay. series of balancing between the, the competing priorities is all described here. So what if I have a version of the plugin that works on a set of somewhat current LTS releases, and then there's an LTS release that I do a different one for? And so, you know, like it's breaking so that the one that worked for, let's see, N-2 and N-3 would not work for N current. Yes. Yeah, but so, I want them both up there because both LTSs are still supported. Or all, all the LTSs are. Well, and so so the the usual pattern there is a plugin, a plugin starts with where is that? A plugin starts with depending on an older version. 2.387.3 is a good example of an older version. This mm -hmm. is this is a relatively recent as in within the last seven months okay. that this was released right so this is this is relatively recent but not uh not brand not the newest so so it i'm using 2.387.3 that's my my dependency i say you must have at least that that's the oldest that i will ever test with or support you on now some change happens in jenkins 2.414.1 and I decide I want to consume that change. I want to be able to use that change. Then I will increment this version number to 2.414.1 and I then have to change this to 2.414.x. 
Okay. Is that what you were asking, Meg? Yeah. Well, what if I still like in that in your example, two point three eight seven point three is still out there, and I still want my plugin to be available to people who are running that. Which but it, it is because okay. because the previous version I shipped. So uh, let's get very specific. I shipped Git plugin 3.0 that requires 2.387.3. Okay. New hot feature comes out in, in Jenkins 2.414. I absolutely want to use it. I could create Git plugin 4.0 that requires 2.414. 3.0 is still available for users of the old line. And I can actually continue releasing incrementals. I could release 3.1 that delivers okay. to that old line. I could release 3.2. And we do that relatively frequently, especially in the context of security releases. Ah, so artifact ID, and that that's why it's point X that will pick those up. Right, exactly. So does this read me link to that other page about how it, to select? It does not. And that's that's one of the things already this phrase here, selecting your plugins LTS baseline, I think should point here. I agree. Right. That makes, for me, that just, that makes sense that right. it should absolutely. Otherwise it's like, I like the number seven. Right. Right. And so, so here, I'm even going to do it while we're here because I think it's just as simple for us to do it while we're here as to. So the idea being that, after selecting your plugins baseline, like that. Okay, so commit the changes. And we're going to say link to choosing a Jenkins version docs. All right, and we want a new branch. Prepare for more details about version selection. Bomb version selection. There we go. Okay. And new branch. So let's call this uh, link to, to uh, bomb version choosing chooser okay got it and link to choosing a jenkins version Start of the improvements based on number, number, oops. Now we've got to see what the issue ID was. Oh, it's not that. Just a minute. Sorry, I have to make a good pull request. This one. 2359, okay. And make sure you're opening from a topic branch, which we are. Title represents, describe what we did. Yes, link to relevant issues, we did that. Link to relevant pull requests, tests, N slash A. Okay. I think we're ready to submit it. Okay, pull request created. All right. So that one I think we've we've got agreement makes sense. We just we put that into the README. Now what do you think about, so here it says, import the latest bomb from that line. And my thought was, put sub put subheadings here, three at least three different subheadings. One for this one, current recommendation, one for first 
Java 11 and one for last Java 8. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So does, does that seem reasonable to the two of you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and I can do that separately. We don't need to do that during this session. Then, then Joseph Peterson asked the question, hey, shouldn't we also have something about choosing the bomb version in this page? And the more I thought about it, I thought probably not, but we ought to have a link from here to the to the bomb instructions. Then the question is, which bomb instructions should we take them to? Because the precisely detailed bomb instructions are here in the in the bomb readme. These are the most accurate, the most precise, the best engineering description. There's an alternative, which is here in the in the tutorial for developers, in the developer guide, improve a plugin. There's this thing with a video that talks about use the plugin bill of materials. But it is not nearly as detailed as, and in this case at the moment, it's actually wrong, right? It's yeah. this thing is manually maintained and needs to be upgraded from 2.375 to 2.387.3 and needs to have a new version number here. So, so the, the bill of materials repository is probably the better choice, not this tutorial. I would, why not both? Mm, okay. Be, what I would say, you know, for, for the full explanation, go to the readme file. Um, if this is your first time, if you're just getting started here and want a tutorial, go here. Ah, ah, okay, good. Yeah. Interesting. If if they need if they're a novice to this, they probably need the whole thing on using the plugin bill of materials anyhow. Right, right. Good point. So so they could get a hey, if you want a video overview, here's this thing that gives a video overview. For for details, refer to the official documentation in the plugins repository in the plugin in the bill of materials repository. Good. Exactly. I like that. I mean, yeah. if there's a reason to have both documents, and I think there is, then they should both be referenced to. Yep. The writer who uses too many XRES probably, but okay, very good. I like that. All right. So let me make a quick note of this one, of that. So Whoops. And Chris Stern both felt that we should should include a link to the plugin bill of materials tutorial page. and to the documentation in this repository. Ah, my fat fingers in F10. This repository in the page. So let's, let me get this one. And then okay, good, excellent. Thank you. All right, okay. that that was what I wanted to review. Are there any other comments that you want to provide before before we go on to next topic? Nope. nope. Okay, so next topic is we had talked last week or several weeks ago about the concept of adding the existing requirements and support policy documentation to a new chapter of the user handbook. So for reminder's sake, here's the user handbook. It looks like this. So it's got installing, um, using, managing, system admin, scaling, and troubleshooting. But in addition to all those things, hiding under installing here, the Linux page has links to Java requirements, 
web browser compatibility, Windows support policy, Linux support policy, servlet container, all useful things, but they're not in any place in the table of contents. So not easy to find and not obvious to, to readers. Oh, this is an important part of, of your experience. So the idea that we had discussed several weeks ago was let's put create a new chapter and the i the where the the prototype has put it is right after troubleshooting jenkins called platform information and what i wanted to do was show that to you so you can see how it's going and we talk further about structure you okay with that sure okay so compile just a moment so Still building, still building, still building. Why, why is it after troubleshooting? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Right now it's after troubleshooting because that's where Kevin put it. Okay. No other reason. That is, there's absolutely no other reason that it's after troubleshooting except that's where it's been placed. We can suggest any place that we think makes sense. Okay. Okay, so right. let's go to the user guide. And here we see already now there's platform information yeah okay so so first victory now let's jump into it a little deeper by going to various places let's go to any one of them and it stays there so it travels up and down as we'd hope so here's the platform information section it's got two subsections one called java and Java has three pages in it right now. Java requirements, Java 8 to 11, Java 11 to 17. It will have a fourth upgrade Java from 17 to 21. Okay. So, so Java, but notice now we are two levels deep in the nesting here. And... Yeah. And it it does expand and contract, and we've got we've got at least one other place where we're doing that kind of thing. This in... is the metrics. Sorry, what was reverse that? Proxy configuration. Yes, yes, exactly. So we've got reverse proxy configuration that does in fact go a second level deep because each reverse proxy is sort of a a subset or a specialization of the more general purpose top level thing a right subsection. yeah yeah exactly they are effectively subsections yeah oh yeah that's good chris's experience with the yeah. the new new thing you know this very good okay so mm. so the thought was with java we've also got subsections and now the the navigation there is a little surprising for me in that it expanded both when I clicked on one of them. Oh, okay. And and I, I haven't I haven't investigated to see if that's that would happen here as well because right in, or in the system admin page because right now we've only got I believe the only thing that has additional nesting in it is reverse proxy configuration on this page. Uh, it could be me, so I may be able to fix it. But um, can I take a look at the PR? Uh, it, there's there's not a PR yet. This was Kevin. Kevin handed it to me. Said Mark, this is completely broken. Why is it broken? And I was able to find one thing that fixed it enough to put make this visible. So he's he's not ready for a PR yet. He's still he's still very early prototype. Okay. But I, when I, we get to proto when we get to PR, I'll certainly let you know, Chris. Yeah, because I think it's something I did because I, I was just not thinking about like having two level two two folders, maybe it depends. Like, because uh, can we see the IDE for this? Because I just want to check something. When you say IDE, you mean code. Cool. Uh, oh, sure, absolutely. Cool. Here, so yeah. so it's in content. Yeah. Content. Uh book if i remember right is nope docs hang on i've got to go navigating now content okay. doc 
uh, book, platform information. Okay, so here's the chapter definition for it. Okay. Yeah. And then under Java, here's the section. Same, yeah, section. And then if we go back here under support policy again, here's the section. Yeah, I think I, I think it's like something more more like uh, something else when when you change the code. Because I, I when I did it, I I wasn't thinking about like the, where we get to the like now. Okay. So like it was well well so okay so I, I'm going to use this as my excuse to ask a different question then. What okay. if we attempted to flatten this into a single list? Mm -hmm rather than work. java and support policies what if it was everything at the top level java requirements upgrading yeah. 8 to 11 11 to 17 17 to 21 yeah. linux support policy and platform information only had things one level one one level down in it what mm -hmm. what would the two of you think in terms of how does that feel structurally it depends how many items there are is this the yeah. full list of items that there would be this is almost the full list. So there are, oh, I love your rule of seven. I bet that's where you're going, isn't it? Uh, so, so, yeah. Okay, so yeah. here are four items, right? Those There are four items. And those items, I don't expect to add many more to them because this thing, it's very slow for us to add something to it. We uh -huh. added, we started with a Windows support policy some years ago. I, knuck, I caved and did the Linux support policy. We realized we needed browser and servlet container, and that's sort of reached the limit. And here, Java requirements, we get general purpose Java and then upgrade for each transition. So eight to 11 is one, 11 to 17 is two, 17 to 21 is three. So we've got a total right now of eight leaf nodes in this it would it will grow in two years to be nine because then we'll be going from 21 to 25. Will we still be keeping the eight to 11 at that point though? I don't know if if we would bother to keep eight to 11 because I hope by that time we will have version documentation and you can't do eight to 11 when you're upgrading from something that is only supports Java 17 or only supports Java 11. Right. And even like, I mean, eight doesn't bother me. If it became a list of 30, I think we've got a problem. Right. And and I, I can't see it ever becoming a list of 30. But what I can see is, because I do like what you're saying, if it started to get too long, it could be um, a hybrid. So we could have like Java upgrades. Right, right. And, like and, level, and under that have the different ones, because that seems to be the thing that's going to right there is there is there is certainly there is an excuse that would say hey we could do nesting but as i look at kevin's prototype here i wonder should we even bother with nesting let's what if we just remove support policies and instead put these four items at the at the immediate level below platform information uh-huh yeah actually i i, I like it without the nest anymore because i it, it, can't defeat the purpose of having a section. Yeah, that okay, good. So so that was you you sort of expressed my concern as well is the nesting here, particularly when when they the two of them expand at the same time, it it doesn't do the information hiding that I might have been hoping for. Right. So right. the 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 current mm -hmm. expand and contract behavior. I would have thought, oh, support policies. I only want to look at support policies, but it's expanding more than that. Right. And I could argue, I mean, that actually the Java is Java support policies too. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. It this the Java requirements could could easily be rephrased as Java support policy. And then they're all support policies. Right. And maybe it's if we're looking to the future, then we say in a future day, it might be support policies and upgrades. And but then then again, if it's upgrade, I might want to we might want a chapter upgrading Jenkins. Just like we've got a chapter installing Jenkins. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. so I think what I'm hearing from the two of you is you'd be okay if this were flattened. Yes. Yep. Okay, good. So I may propose back to him that we just go ahead and flatten it simply because it's there's not so much information that we need two levels of nesting. Right. Yeah. Great. And if at some time this list starts to become unwieldy, we might nest one section of it or something. Right, right. Well, and that would that would be more more akin to what this thing is doing, where we've got one very special case, reverse proxy configuration, and it really is a very special case, right? These are specializations where you choose only one of them as a user. You don't right. pick, you don't say, oh, I'm going to do two different reverse proxies. No, you, you choose one and you stick with that exact one. Right. But I may care about Linux and the browser. Right. And, right. This, you know, in terms of support Java. policies, you probably have Linux and Windows. You certainly care about browser compatibility. So three of these items under support policies plus Java requirements, you care about four of the five for sure. Now, servlets, yeah. we hope you'll you just use the servlet we provide. But the other things, really, choosing a Linux version is a big deal. Choosing a Windows version is a big deal. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And the the list that I see in the right frame, uh -huh. I, I like that order better than what's in the left frame. Oh, oh, good. Okay, so Linux, Windows, ah, very good. Good point. So this is closer to my human interest priorities. Mm -hmm. Servlet containers is the least likely for me to care. And, and the most variation occurs in which Linux version people are using. When I say, if I see a list that has Linux and Windows isn't the next thing, I have a moment where saying, oh shit, they don't support Windows. Yeah. For me, it's usually the other way around. It's like Windows, there's no Linux there. It's like, yeah. Um, but you know, but that, because those, and if you did, if we did have to sub nest, I mean, there could come a time, maybe we have, we pick up iOS or something, you know, yeah, right, right. we could, could get to a point where we had to make a subsection for operating systems, God forbid, but it's possibility. Yeah, I guess, I guess I could see, I certainly Bruno Verachten, for instance, has done experiments trying to run Jenkins on Android as an oh. opera and running it native on Android. Now that, that experiment's kind of a dark kind of experiment, right? Because I'm not especially interested in running directly on that any more than I'm interested in running directly on other more exotic things like right. uh, but, the system 390 the, VM system. But I see, but I see the future these, you know, because I kind of don't do as much on my cell phone as lots of people do. Mm -hmm. I right. keep my computers and I do things on the cell phone and there's other things that's going to have to wait till I'm in front of a real computer, but people are doing everything on them. So mm -hmm. it could happen. It could. Yep. Good. All right. So I will plan to, I'll propose back to Kevin that, Hey, we discussed it and we thought maybe flattening it would be the right choice given the, the content. And also that I have something to raise. So it seems like yes. uh, we are like migrating to the tools for building website. Uh, so like maybe by the time we need to upgrade, uh, we, if we're using a toy, it's a lot easier. Oh, good point. Okay. And I also found the culprit for the code, like uh, why it's not working. Because I just oh, you did. on the chat, yeah. All right. Thank you, Chris. So, so is it worth fixing it so that this could expand and contract if we need it? Or is it just not worth the bother? Maybe not now, if we don't need okay. it. Okay, good. Uh, there's... We we don't need it as far as I can tell because I think this should just be a single a single depth list. Okay. Yeah. A list of depth one. There we go. All right. And I so, also think it should be up like I would put it after installing actually. Oh oh good point yeah so let's let's get so the idea here was put it installing Jenkins platform information. Up there at the top rather than putting it down at the bottom. Right. That's something I can do as well. Good. All right. Anything else on this particular idea? No, nice work. Okay, yeah. good. All right. Let's see. So given that my level of exhaustion at the moment, I'd propose that we call it done for today. 
There is an interesting tool to just mention in pas passing called Veil.sh that is a, an open source command line tool that's willing to make comments on your editorial style. Oh, okay. Gavin Mogan said he's using it. And I don't know what, what his experience has been, but it offers suggestions. And so what's he may... using as a style guide then? Is he using Google or is he using? No, his... it, it has it built into its own thing. So I don't know what its editorial style guide, but it's fast and dependency free, meaning it doesn't look at anybody else's thing. So uh, I, I'm not sure what they're using for their style guide. Is it opinionated? I, oh, I'm sure it's very well. Yeah, here we go. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Try to avoid using first person plural like we. Yeah. Okay. So uh, feel free to use we've instead of we have. Avoid using will. So it's. Well, what is the right? It looks like so google.parents, google.will, google.we. So that looks like he's using some from the Google style guide. Well, and, and that's, since it says it's extensible, uh -huh. I suspect these are probably extensions, right? Google has a style guide. Vail has their own style guide. And, and there are people obviously contributing things to the style. Right. It seems from what I know, and I am not a style guide expert, except I've become extraordinarily good at avoiding exercises and creating a new style guide. I've done that just enough to... Uh, that I don't want to do it again. Um, but there's a lot of people who seem to believe in that it's the Microsoft style guide that was handled down at my, Mount Sinai. I kind of like the Google better. <laughs> oh, okay. I but am the wrong. To me that those are the two. Those are ah, the two okay. babies yeah. out there. Yeah, and I, okay. I'm unfortunately largely oblivious to style guides at that level. So right. But there, because a lot, of, I mean, a lot of it is just good sense. The big one that I look for is um, header capitalization. Mm, That's okay. one. And yeah. I don't care to ever participate in another discussion. I have sort of what I prefer. I can live with any of it. Whoever feels strongest, you win. I'm done. Right. But, uh, right. but what I do hate, and I do this all the time, is create a document that has a mix. But because we, I'm not working under a style guide that specifies it. So some days I do one thing, some days I do another thing. Some day I'm reviewing somebody's text and I make them change it. Other days I say, ah, let it go. Right. So okay, very Fair. cool. All right, that's all that I had. Um, I have to forewarn there will be some times in September and October where I'm unavailable because I'm a speaker at DevOps World Tour in New York, Chicago, and Santa Clara. Oh yay! And yeah. if you're in the Santa Clara area sometime, Meg, I may send, ping you and say, hey, I'm in town. I was going to say, I would love to see you. That would be fun. I agree. But not enough to come to DevOps World, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I detect a, a hint of rebellion there, but okay, that's great. No, I just, I, I do not enjoy big conferences, even when I, you know, when I need to be at them. Got I even it. sometimes have fun, but I don't love them. So, but All we right. can, there's lots of places we can get together. Fabulous. All right. That's all that I had for today. Thanks very much. Recording will be available in about 24 hours. Terrific. Um, before you hang up, I have a very quick question for you. Yes, please. Um, what version of Ubuntu do you favor right now? Right now I'm running 2204. Okay, that's what I was gonna do. And then I saw there was 2304, and then everybody's excited about 2310. And I'm like, why would I go to point 10 unless point oh four is messy? which made me think 22 sounds like a nice even number. Well, so so I'd warn it depends on depends on how often you're willing to upgrade. So 22.10 has a I think a 6 month life cycle or uh -huh. maybe it's a 12 month life cycle and 2204 has a 10 year life cycle. Wow. And so so it's well, I'm installing uh, a new computer to replace one that's running 18. Does that answer your question? So then you, if and, you, if, if you're replacing an 18 installation, then your pattern of behavior lobbies you to install <laughs> 2204. Okay. 
I yeah, thought unless there you, was something real. I mean, it wouldn't. And I'm I'm vowing that I'm going to upgrade more frequently. But right, um, yeah. So so your other but there's your nothing other choices compelling are, to go for twenty three. I I I would avoid twenty three dot ten absolutely because it upgrades more frequently than you're willing to upgrade. And twenty three dot oh four does not have the ten year life cycle that twenty two dot oh four does. Oh, okay. So that only their even numbered releases get that long life cycle. Okay. Okay. Good to know that. I was trying to, I was going to go do this research and I thought Mark will just know that would be so easy. Very, very good. Yeah. I'm actually, Mark's got some really hot topics about this thing, uh, Java 11, 17, and 21 discussion that, yeah, we've got an, uh, some very interesting conversations about the next three to four years, how they will look for Java support in Jenkins. Mm hmm. So, yeah. And then final question. Did you have a wonderful time on your vacation? I did. Although I yeah. ran over my, my own foot with <gasps> an all-terrain oh. vehicle. And so oh. my foot swelled a little bit and no broken bones, okay. but That's I'm right. limping a little bit. So Chris, I'm not sure if you recognize the term all-terrain vehicle, but ATV is a four wheel, um, like a motorcycle with four tires instead of two tires. Okay. And we were out in the dirt, in the mountains, and it leaned a little to the left and I'm a bicycle rider. So I put my foot out and then oh, drove okay. over it. <laughs> oh, Mark, I'm so sorry, but I'm glad you didn't break anything. No, yeah. no break. And, you know, just, just laugh at the doctors. I, I laughed at the doctor and said, doctor, your diagnosis should be stupid in all capital letters. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because there's no excuse for it. My brother who was with me said, this is not a bicycle. Don't put anything outside of the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. dear. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great Thank night. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, we'll talk mate. to you next week then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.